I'm pleased to report that the situation in Chernobyl is stable. In terms of radiation, I'm told it's the equivalent of a chest X-ray. No, Chernobyl is on fire. Interestingly enough, after Gorbachev uh, retired, he said that the thing that brought down the Soviet uh, empire was, that began the, the end of it, was Chernobyl. Mm. And um, they, they realized that uh, this was a, a small nuclear event. I mean, it didn't actually explode, mm. it, it, it didn't ignite. But um, the, the fallout from this nuclear accident was so severe, and that's what they get into in the third and fourth episodes, mm. where they're trying to clear it up, and they clean it up. And, I mean, they're having to, they move, literally move the earth to mm. try and figure out how to get rid of all this radioactive material. That they, the Soviet high command realized that they couldn't actually conduct a nuclear war because um, they would be impossible to survive. Mm. Uh, and that was the beginning of the end of, of, of the, the Soviet regime. One of the things that is sort of insidious about the threat of it is Initially, when you go into these environments, you're terrified. Mm. But you, because you can't see it and you don't know what it's doing to you, very quickly you become blasé to what it's potentially doing to you. And, um, and so people started to take massive risks. Plus, the Soviets were lied to and they were told that if you drank enough vodka, it would protect you <laughs> from the effects of radiation. Uh. So they were handing out bottles of vodka to everyone and they were smashed. Absolutely smashed. And of course, vodka thought, does not protect you no, it from radiation poisoning, no, just doesn't. to point that out. Yes, it doesn't. For your character, I mean, obviously, who is a real life person, we talk about his legacy and the effects it had on him because he killed himself. Yeah, I think it was significant that the, the day that he did it was the day that he was supposed to go back to the um, the Politburo and deliver another report about how successful, you know, the whole, they dealt with the whole incident. He just, he didn't want to lie again. And he was making a statement and then he was trying to provoke his, uh, a discussion about, um, within the scientific community to talk honestly about what had happened and why it happened because I think there were 20 nuclear reactors built to this design around the Soviet Union and they all had the same flaw in them. So any one of them could, hmm. could do the same thing. In fact, when, you know, we filmed in Lithuania and when Lithuania joined the EU, one of the conditions of them joining the EU was they had to decommission the nuclear reactor hmm. that they had. And the legacy of, uh, of Chernobyl still being felt, international experts to this day still continue to call it the worst nuclear disaster in human history. There may have only been, well I say only, you know, over 30 people killed directly, but the thousands of cases afterwards, the, you know, uh, it absolutely. is a lasting legacy to this day. The, the, the birth defects in, in Belarus and Ukraine are just appalling mm. and the cancer, rates of cancer there and everything are just appalling. And, um, they aren't included in the official figures, but there's, you know, the real numbers are in the tens of thousands yeah. of people who have uh, either died or had their life affected by it, or their children's life affected by it. There is the whistleblowing element as well. Yes. Um, and just in light of recent events, I think about Cambridge Analytica, mm. the National Health Service mm. in this country. What do you think the message is in terms of the courage that pe these people show to stand up to the establishment and speak their truth? We should probably see these people as being heroes. It takes a tremendous amount of courage for people to stand up and say that they, they've seen something wrong and that something should change. And again, what we, on the one hand, you rely on these people to stand up mm. and act on their conscience because they see something's gone wrong. Mm. And on the other hand, there's no great support towards them and um, once they do that, that they, they shouldn't be vilified and their lives shouldn't be ruined and their characters shouldn't be assassinated. Or, um, it, it, the people who do it are tremendously brave because I don't think anyone does that without knowing what's going to happen, that mm. their life will change forever. What do you want people to take from Chernobyl, this, this series? I mean, we've talked about so much, it deals with mm. so many issues, but what do you want people to take away from it? Um, well, I think that the, the overall theme of the story is how something as simple as, as um, a lie 
can lead to a catastrophic uh, uh, result and that um, and, and we are dealing with in that, in that case um, a society that was built on a culture of lies and deceit that people had become cynical about they, they just didn't expect the truth and you know I mean I, yeah, that word itself now that the truth is a um, is a bit of a you know is a bit of a mind people argue over whether things are it, it is the truth they were they're very successful at dismantling people's idea of their basis or their rationale for believing in something uh, yeah, that's a very dangerous situation to get into yeah. if we're not able to agree on whether a, a fact is a fact mm. you know mm. I just want to know, as an actor, where you stand on the streaming versus cinema debate that's raging at the moment. Oh, You've got yeah. two very successful series, Mad Men and uh, The Crown, that are on Netflix. Obviously, um, Chernobyl is going to be um, aired weekly on Sky Atlantic, but it will be on our catch-up mm. service as well. And there is this big conflict between the Hollywood elite, if you like, and the new streaming services, that they can't operate in the same space. Do you think that they can? You know, that debate goes all the way back to when um, television first came mm. out and it was, chat it was keeping people at home rather than going to the cinema. And, um, uh, I, and specifically the way that this debate has reignited itself, it's, it's, it's around awards. Mm. Um, and I, I think, you know, you, you, they have the, the people who hand out the awards have the right to decide what the criteria mm. for entering into it is. Um, I don't think, I, obviously there's a space for both uh, experiences to exist and I think that one of the reasons why the streaming services are so successful is that their content is geared towards adults who find it hard to get out. Mm. and. Um, it's part of the reason why I feel that we are experiencing this golden age of television is they are able to satisfy a, 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 an, an adult demand for content, mm. you know, which demands greater storytelling, more complex storytelling.